Hi everybody, my name's Christine and I am the founder and admin from PSSM and MFM Awareness. And today, we're going to be explaining the difference between PSSM 1 and PSSM 2. Let's get started. PSSM 1 and PSSM 2, two muscle diseases with the exact same name. But in fact, they couldn't actually be more different from each other. So what is the difference between these two muscle myopathies? To start with, let's explain what PSSM actually means. PSSM stands for Polysaccharide Storage Myopathy. Polysaccharide Storage Myopathy is a muscle disease that causes the horse to store too much polysaccharide, glycogen, in their muscles. Now this stands true for PSSM1, but not for PSSM2. So wait a minute, PSSM2 isn't actually a polysaccharide storage myopathy? Yes, that's correct. Well, what is it then? To answer that question, let's first talk a bit about PSSM1 and what the muscle disease actually is and what part of the muscle it affects. So what is PSSM1? PSSM1 is a hereditary muscle disease that causes a horse to store too much glycogen, aka sugar, in their muscles. Unlike PSSM2, PSSM1 is caused by one single gene mutation and this is in the GYS1 gene. There is no other gene responsible for causing PSSM1. Now let's show you what part of the muscle PSSM1 actually affects. Here we have a drawing of a horse's shoulder muscle which we have circled. You'll notice in this drawing there are lots and lots of tiny circles. Now this isn't because we are trying to draw an Appaloosa. A horse's muscles are made up of hundreds of thousands of tiny little tubular structures called muscle fibres, which is what these circles are. In this next image here, we have a close-up of one of these circles. This is a drawing of a single muscle fibre, bearing in mind a horse has hundreds of thousands of these in their body, and this is just one single one. In horses with PSSM1, the extra glycogen is predominantly stored around the sarcolemma, which is here around the edge of the muscle fibre. Now remember this as we move on to talking about PSSM2. So what is PSSM2? Despite its name, PSSM2 isn't actually PSSM. Yes, you said that a minute ago, but why have called it PSSM if it isn't? Because scientists didn't know what PSSM2 was when they first discovered it, so they named it after the most relatable muscle disease at the time. Then what on earth is PSSM2 then? PSSM2 is an umbrella term used for a group of muscle diseases that looked a little bit like PSSM1 under the microscope, but they actually weren't. The easiest way to think of PSSM2 and its umbrella terminology is to think of PSSM2 as a filing cabinet where anything that looked a bit like PSSM1, but it actually wasn't because the scientists didn't know what it was, got chucked into. Under this filing cabinet called PSSM2, there are currently two separate muscle myopathies, and these are MFM, myofibrillar myopathy, and RER, recurrent exertional rhabdomyolysis. Now most of the variants of PSSM2 discovered so far are actually a form of MFM. Because of this, we can safely say that PSSM2 is in fact MFM or myofibrillar myopathy. So what exactly is myofibrillar myopathy? Myofibrillar myopathy is a degenerative hereditary muscle disease caused by a mutation in muscle proteins. Unlike PSSM1 where only the GYS1 gene is responsible for causing the myopathy, MFM can be caused by a mutation in a number of different genes there is not one single gene responsible for MFM, there is quite a few, which is what is delaying the process for peer review and what other, less enlightened scientists could not get their head around. And to make matters worse, there are more genes responsible for MFM being discovered as we speak. So MFM is a totally separate and different disease to PSSM1. But what makes it different in its disease phase? Now let's go back to our muscle fibre drawing again. You will notice that inside the muscle fibre itself, there are also lots of tiny little tubular structures. These are what make up muscle fibres, and these are called myofibrils. Did you catch what I just said? Myofibrils. Now can you guess where myofibrillar myopathy affects? 
You guessed it. Myofibrillar myopathy affects the myofibrils, which are the tubular structures inside the muscle fibre. Some variants also affect the muscle fibre itself. Now if we think of the size of a horse and how many muscle fibres and in turn myofibrils there are in the horse's body, we are talking millions and millions. MFM causes a gene mutation in all of these myofibrils. Unlike PSSM1, MFM symptoms are not caused by glycogen the horse consumes. The fault is in the horse's muscle makeup itself. The easiest way I can describe it to you is to imagine building a brick wall like this. As you can see, this is a pretty rubbish brick wall, right? It's not going to withstand much, is it? This is what happens in PSSM2 horses. My fibrils are built like a perfect brick wall, but the gene mutation adds clumps and breaks in the structure. In this case, the structure being the horse's body, and it makes it unstable and weak. And to make matters worse, the horse cannot make healthy muscle proteins. The body is in a constant state of clearing these faulty bricks and making more faulty bricks. Hence PSSM2 is degenerative, meaning it gets worse with age, as eventually the body has no choice but to produce scar tissue. Why is it important we know the difference between PSSM1 and PSSM2? This is because many owners and professionals alike think that because of the names that PSSM1 and PSSM2 are exactly the same muscle disease so they just throw them into the same bucket and the same comes with management. They think that a PSSM2 horse can be managed exactly the same as a PSSM1 horse which is false. PSSM1 and PSSM2, as I've just showed you, are both completely separate muscle diseases and should be managed as such. So the basic diet for a PSSM1 horse is a diet of low sugar and low starch. This is because PSSM1 is a glycogen storage disease and a horse gets glycogen from what it consumes in its diet. Now a basic diet for a PSSM2 horse is a diet of high protein. This is because the horse is in a constant state of clearing the faulty muscle fibres and renewing them again. So to aid this process, the horse needs a high protein diet. PSSM2 cannot and should not be managed the same as PSSM1 because it's a totally separate muscle disease. And hopefully this video has helped you understand the difference between the two. And that concludes our video on the difference between PSSM1 and PSSM2. I hope you found this video helpful and that you now understand the difference between these two completely different muscle diseases. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, join our Facebook group, follow us on Instagram and check out our website for all things PSSM, MFM and RER. Thank you for watching.